Lindsay, welcome to another video. Today I have some slow cooker recipes. I promised this video to you probably about a month ago, so I know a lot of you are waiting for it, but with the holidays and everything, it just took a little bit more time. So I'm very excited to share these recipes. As always, I'll put the links to the recipes down in the description box below. I always appreciate the thumbs up on my videos, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to be part of the family. So let's get started with these slow cooker recipes. All right, the first one we're making is slow cooker pork tenderloin with barbecue baked beans. This one is five points, and I'm not sure what the calories are on this. I'll put it down on the screen, or it'll be down in the description box below. So right now, I'm just cutting up a zucchini, an onion, and a green bell pepper. So for this one, we need a pound of pork tenderloin that I have over there on my plate. All right, so I've got my zucchini and pepper cut up. Now I'm just cutting up the onion. Now you can cut it however you want. I like mine, it calls for diced, but I like it to be a little bit smaller than diced. So now we're just gonna add everything to the slow cooker. I have my Instant Pot insert here. That's because my Instant Pot also functions as a slow cooker. I did go ahead and spray it with some cooking spray. So now I'm putting in 14 ounces of crushed tomatoes, 15 ounce can of pinto beans drained and rinsed. Then I'm gonna add my one diced zucchini, my green pepper, and an onion. Quarter cup of tomato paste, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and I have a mixture of seasonings here. And here I have half a tablespoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of dry mustard, a teaspoon of dried oregano, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And then just mix that all together. And then I'm gonna nestle the pork down in there. So I did cut my pork tenderloins in half. And I forgot to mention, this makes enough for four. So just nestle those down in there. Now I'm gonna let this slow cook for five hours. All right, this is done. I actually got done about five minutes ago, so I'm gonna take a look at it. Oh, that looks good. Oh, it smells good. All right, so let me dish these up into bowls and we'll try it. So it said to take out the pork and cut it into 12. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's just so tender that it's just falling apart. And then the rest, oh you can't see, my light is not on. So the rest is like vegetables. So I decided that I'm just gonna throw some of this long grain and wild rice in the microwave. I'm gonna cook that up real quick and then just kind of pour that right over the rice. But I mean, you definitely could eat it just this way with the pork and vegetables, but I'm gonna add some rice to mine. All right, so I've just got about a third of a cup of the rice there. So hopefully you can tell what it looks like. All right, now the taste test. Wow, that's got a lot of flavor. I really like that. I think for me personally, I would leave the cloves out. That's the only thing I think I would do different is the cloves. All right, hopefully you can see it a little better from this angle. But we both really like it. It's really good. And it's five points for a quarter of that amount of meat I had and one and a half cups of the bean mixture. And this is what we have left. So this is our lunch for tomorrow. And my husband's I put rice on, but mine I didn't. So it seemed like the rice was a little bit heavy. I could have definitely left that out. Um, next time I won't add that. With the pinto beans and everything else that's in it, it's definitely enough. And I changed my mind. I would leave the cloves in next time. I said that I thought that I didn't like the flavor of it. But as I got eating it, I really enjoyed the cloves in it. So I think that first bite I took, it, it was just more than, I just wasn't expecting it. But it was definitely good. I will keep it this, the recipe exactly the same. And adding those extra tomatoes like I did, you don't even need to do that. That really made it a little bit too much tomato sauce, but it was really good. We really both liked this one. All right, the next one I'm making is Crock-Pot Barbecue Meatloaf. This is a favorite of ours. I've been making this one for years. 
This is actually one that I originally found on the Weight Watchers website and I just kind of made a few tweaks myself. So this one's pretty easy to put together. The only thing with this one is you do have to make sides. So this is just for the meatloaf and then for my sides, usually with meatloaf, I always have some type of mashed potatoes with it and then maybe some roasted Brussels sprouts. Now this recipe is very versatile. In fact, sometimes I add peppers, sometimes I don't. I happen to have a red pepper in my fridge that I wanna get used up, so I am going to cut that up and put that in it. It also calls for a shallot. I didn't have any shallots, so if you don't have shallots, you can use an onion. If you don't like onions, you can completely leave those out. Since it does call for a shallot, shallots are fairly small, so I'm just gonna use half the onion, and I'm probably just gonna use half the pepper as well. So the other things that we're going to need for this are one third cup of seasoned breadcrumbs, one egg, about a half a tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. We need a half a teaspoon each of salt, pepper, ground sage, and yellow mustard. And then we need a tablespoon of oregano. So I've already mixed all those up in my little dish there. It calls for a quarter cup of Velveeta shreds. I'm using just regular reduced fat cheese. In fact, in each of these little containers, I have one eighth cup of reduced fat cheese and I have some green onion. These were actually from meal prep. I did chili meal prep and I put these in containers. If you saw my video, you may have seen I put sour cream in one container and then the cheese and green onion in another. And my husband ended up, actually both of us, we each had a day that we didn't end up using the cheese and green onion. So since I have the two one eighth cup, that's a quarter of a cup of cheese, I'm just gonna use those. And the green onion will be just a little bit of added flavor. Now the recipe calls for one and a half pounds of ground turkey breast. I am actually going to be combining turkey breast with regular ground turkey. So I'm gonna use a pound of the ground turkey breast and a half a pound of ground turkey. When I've used just ground turkey breast in the past, sometimes it does come out a little bit dry because there's just not much fat in there. So I usually combine it now. And the ground turkey that I'm using is still lean. It's 93%. The recipe though is for the ground turkey breast. It's going to make six servings, 188 calories, and then the points on this are only two points. I usually have two servings of this, so for me it comes out to four, but I'm probably just going to kick it up and call it six since I'm adding the regular ground turkey to it. Alright, so I had actually thought about cooking my onions and peppers first just to get them softer, but I think what I'm going to do is just dice them up real small. I'm going to use, like I used in my meal prep, I'm going to use my chef's rival. This really, really minces them small. I just don't like big chunks in my meatloaf. I think I'm just going to do half of the pepper. I'll see how much it comes out to. Alright, I think that's perfect, and I definitely don't want any more red onion than that. Now just take a bowl and add everything to the bowl. So I'm going to add the one pound of turkey breast and then the half a pound of ground turkey. So I've already combined my half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of ground sage, one teaspoon of oregano, and half a teaspoon of ground mustard. So just pour that right in there. I'm going to add in one third cup of seasoned breadcrumbs, half a tablespoon of garlic, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, the quarter cup of cheese, which in my case is also going to be mixed with some green onion, and the egg. Now I usually use just a wooden spoon to get it started and then I just get in there and dig with my hands. Now I'm going to add in the onion and pepper, but I'm going to do it slowly because I want to see how much it ends up being because I definitely don't want to overdo it. I think that probably that half a pepper even was too much. Yeah, I think this is going to be perfect. So I used, I would say maybe a quarter of the onion and a quarter of the pepper. So I think I've got it pretty much mixed together without even using my hands. You just want to really make sure the breadcrumbs are all combined in with it. 
So now you want to take your slow cooker insert. What I like to do is add some aluminum foil down at the bottom just so that you can use that to pull it out after. So even if you're using a regular, you know, the regular oval crock pot, just go ahead and do that, line it so that you can use these for handles to pull it up. And I have sprayed that with some cooking spray. So what I usually do, a lot of times people say to make a loaf and then put it in there. I usually just plop it in there and then I make the loaf based on the insert that I'm using. You wanna try to have it uniform though. So try to have it the same thickness all over. Mine's gonna probably end up being more of a circle than an oval. So I end up doing, I don't know, kind of between a square and a rectangle on mine. It really doesn't matter the shape you put it in. So that's all there is to it. Now I have it on slow cook for six hours on low. Now you can do between six to eight hours. I have found though, if you let it go eight hours, that's when it does tend to dry it out more. So I've been doing it at six. You can always cook it more if it's not done after the six hours. There is an option to do it on high for four hours, but I've not tried that. So I can't speak to how well it comes out that way. I've just always done it on low. So now with those leftover onions and peppers that I had, I just put them in a little sandwich bag and flatten them, marked what it is, and I'll just stick this in my freezer and then I'll have this so the next time I go to make meatloaf or something, I can just pull this out and I already have it ready to go. And the same thing with the ground turkey that I had left. So remember, I only used a half a pound of the 93% lean, so I just put that in a little sandwich bag, marked it. I flatten these because they fit better in my freezer that way. Then you can either freeze them and then stand them up or just lay them down and pile them on top of each other. So this is the topping that gets spread on the meatloaf about 30 minutes before it's done. So here, you can't see my brown sugar it kind of melted in with the Worcestershire, but I have two tablespoons of ketchup, two teaspoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire. And I'm just gonna mix that up, and then like I said, that'll get spread over the top about 30 minutes before it's done. Now we're just gonna put the topping on there, and I'm just gonna put the top back on and let that sit for about 30 minutes, then I will plate it. Pull it right out of there, and put it right on the plate. So here is what it looks like. That's one and a half servings, so I'm gonna call it as five points for that. But this is really good and so easy to make. So let me know in the comments what's your favorite thing to make in the slow cooker this time of year. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.